that everybody is talking about, making the Blue Devils this year some must-see television. His legendary head coach, retired Captain Mike Krzyzewski, a 1969 graduate of the U.S. Military Academy in West Point, getting ready to take on his alma mater here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Out of the Patriot League, it's the Army Black Knights taking on the Duke Blue Devils out of the ACC. And just moments ago, inside the Army locker room, head coach Jimmy Allen preparing his troops to take the court here at Cameron. This is about 10 four-minute games, all right? And us competing, us competing, okay? Being together, staying together. How do we react, right? They make a big play. They go on a run. How do we react? What's our body language, all right? This is all about us, period, okay? Let's make sure we stay together. You guys are together on the court. You guys are communicating, okay? And we give our best effort today, all right? Our best effort, okay? All right, let's go. On this Veterans Day, so glad you could join us here this afternoon with retired captain Chris Patola. I'm Doug Sherman. And Chris, for you and others who have served and continue to serve, what does Veterans Day mean to you? It's a day of pride, a day to celebrate the greatest military in the world, to celebrate those who have served and those who are serving, like the cadets on this Army team today. Well, on Tuesday night, we were treated to quite a show by Duke as they blew out Kentucky. But for you, Chris, there were a lot of subtleties to highlight for the Blue Devils. I think we were all surprised by the performance, including the Duke coaching staff. We knew the acrobatics were there, but there was a lot of substance to this team. They were great in transition. They were unselfish. They hit perimeter shots. They guarded Kentucky, and they played hard. We know they're going to dunk the ball, but, man, this is a basketball team with a lot of substance. Well, the nation's highest-rated recruiting class certainly played like it against Kentucky. And Trey Jones, look at those last two numbers, seven assists, zero turnovers. He is so important to the success of this team this year. He is. I, I think it's he's their most important player, Doug. You've got to have a point guard this day and age in college basketball. And, and Cam Reddish had one of the most efficient 22 points, really a quiet 22 of any freshman starting off his, his career. It was, it was an impressive night, let's put it that way. You see, we have cadets in the building on Veterans Day celebrating this Army basketball team that will really be up against it this afternoon against this loaded Duke Blue Devils team. Williamson scored 28 points on 11 of 13 shooting in just 23 minutes. Barrett 33 points in 32 minutes. And as you mentioned, Chris, Camp Reddish 22 points in 24 minutes. It was a remarkable show. Can it continue here this afternoon as we are set to tip things off at Cameron? Arby plays a, a lot like a Davidson team, very spread out, a lot of ball movement. They put really four shooters out there. They're going to try to space Duke out and make them guard in that space. And Chris, you as a player at Army twice came here to Cameron and faced a Blue Devils team that can be daunting. What are these young men facing right now? Well, they're facing one of the most athletic, talented teams that they will ever face. I mean, there's no question about that. But good to get a start here in transition. Army plays fast, Doug, and I think to get some shots to go early will calm you down in this environment. So Josh Caldwell with the first two points of the afternoon. He's a freshman making his second career start. Zion Williamson with his first two. Army has a pair of veteran co-captains in the backcourt. Tommy Funk, Jordan Fox, numbers three and one. They, along with the freshman who scored the first bucket, Josh Caldwell, can do some work. Williamson with the rebound. Here comes Duke. The pass to Barrett. And that's the shot that Army wants Duke to take. If Duke makes that consistently here today, makes 12 like they did against Kentucky, Army's willing to live with that. That's the first missed shot of the year for Matt Wilson, who was a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight Tuesday when Army defeated Marist. You know, there are two things, Doug, for, for Army in defending this Duke team. 
One was stopping them in transition. They spent a lot of their practice yesterday getting back. you got to limit layups and dunks. And then the other is shrinking the floor, plugging gaps, forcing. Look, if, if Duke comes out and, again, makes 12 threes like they did against Kentucky, then Army's going to live with that. They want to keep Duke out of that blue painted area. Williamson gets the ball 20 feet away from the hoop. Cross court to Barrett. His second try also off the mark. Williamson tracks down the rebound and he lays it in. He's relentless. He's all over the glass. Cross court pass knocked away by Jones. Here comes Duke. Pass deflected out of bounds. Last to touch. Blue Devils. He just never stops. He plays with an unbelievable motor, and then when you're gifted with that body, you're going to carve out a ton of space. And then you see the energy after the shot. I mean, of all these freshmen on Duke's team, nobody gives their energy and their emotions more than Zion Williamson does. End of the game, Aaron Duhart, number 23 in black for Army. Jordan Fox from the baseline. Four freshmen playing with Javin Delorier, one of the co-captains with the ball now, handed off to Barry. Finds a crowd in the paint, kicks it out with eight on the shot clock. Cam Reddish pulls up. And he gets the roll. Set it at the top. He had as efficient a 22 and as quiet a 22 as any freshman could in his first college game. He's a terrific shooter. Funk kicks it out. Alex King gets the roll. Sophomore from Columbus, Indiana, ties the game at seven. Did not start in their first game against Marist. Had only practiced three times before that game, coming off an ankle injury. Barrett answers at the other end. 10-7 Duke. Pass mishandled. Goes out of bounds. Army will keep with 21 on the shot clock. Well, it's easier said than done for these players from Army to come into Cameron and keep their focus on who they are and what they want to do. During practice yesterday, we heard uh, Jordan Fox make a comment about, you know, this is what I've seen on TV my whole life. And he said, when I see Coach K, I'll know it's real. It's like seeing a ghost. I mean, how do you overcome that in this environment? You have to stay in character. You know, we were talking to him yesterday after their practice, and. You can't allow all the banners and the Cameron crazies and Coach K's presence and Zion Williamson's girth to distract you from who you are. And it helps that Army's old. I mean, they only start one freshman. They got juniors and seniors, guys who have been in big spots. You just have to stay in character, take a deep breath. And you got to get to the first TV timeout, right? I mean, it, you, you can't, it can't be 12 nothing at the under 16 timeout. Well, they have effectively traded baskets. We've had three ties so far. Williamson just wills himself to the bucket. He's got six early points. Big triple at the other end. Army keeping pace. Clean look for Reddish. There's that stroke you were talking about, Chris. It's very Kevin Durant-esque. His size affords him the ability to shoot at that range with ease. It's an effortless shot. Army trying to get back defensively and slow down this transition of Duke. And Barrett's going to be called for the carry. Duke 15, Army 10 here on Veterans Day. Duke and in talking to him yesterday about his alma mater which he makes it back at least once every year to West Point he talked about the leadership skills that it's the best place on the planet to learn how to become a leader and it has played such a central role in his professional and personal career I would have to agree with him Doug uh, I think it is I think it's the greatest leadership institution in the world uh, for de developing leaders don't tell David Robinson who's in the house today <laughs> but uh, it's a special place and for Coach K, he and his wife Mickey 
got married in the Catholic Chapel at West Point on his day of graduation in 1969. So it has all <laughs> sorts of connections to the Krzyzewski family. Duke with the basketball, leading 17-13. Barrett, Jones, Deloria. Reddish with the basketball, Williamson also out there. And three for three from the perimeter. Cam Reddish and Zion Williamson collectively remain perfect from the floor. You know, Duke did not bring back a player who averaged more than four points a game last year. On opening night, they got 83 points from three freshmen and another freshman who didn't have a turnover. And then how about this guy laying out? I mean, he never stops. A lot of football coaches looking at that meat taken to the floor and saying, my goodness. Well, you know, they call themselves the Brotherhood, this freshman class that came in that essentially recruited each other. And while it's become the norm in the one-and-done era here at Duke to have a star-studded recruiting class, this one feels different. You know, last year you had a group that was not necessarily fully together before they got here to campus. You had the uh, dynamic that was different than you have with these four players who have known for the better part of a year, year and a half, they're going to be together and they're going to work together, and we have seen that manifest itself. Well, you never really know what a freshman is going to do, even as hyped as they could be. You know, like I was here at Duke on staff when Austin Rivers came in, and there was no more cultish figure coming out of high school than Austin Rivers. And so you never really know, some of these guys like Zion Williamson, how's that going to translate to the college game? And that's what I think we saw on opening night, is that there are a lot of acrobatics, but this team, there's also a lot of substance to it. Army down seven, pass deflected. Easy layup by Jacob Kessler, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. 2015, Duke with the lead. I uh, mentioned uh, Army wants to play fast, and that's how they do play. I, I asked Jimmy Allen, Army's head coach, I said, are you going to do that here in Cameron? He said, we're going to be who we are. We're going to put who we are up against one of the best teams in the country and see how that translates. The block shot by Marquise Bolden, to me, Chris, illustrates the new Marquise this year. Running the floor, the athletic ability, and the ability to do what he just did. One of the things Coach K said after that Kentucky game is that Marquise did not protect our basket the way we need him to. How about the timing on that and without fouling? That's the key for Bolden and, and Javin Delorier. they got to protect that basket, allow those athletes to guard in the perimeter, and they have to do it without getting into foul trouble. And really, this is the first time since coming to Duke that Marquise Bolden is fully healthy. He's had mononucleosis. He's had multiple leg injuries that have really stunted his growth. Remember, he also was a McDonald's All-American coming out of high school and was rated 16th overall nationally in 2016 in the ESPN 100. And I think he needed to unpack his bags. You know, Marquise Bolton, you mentioned the success in high school, how highly regarded he was. You know, these kids come in thinking they're one and dones. And Marquise Bolton had to figure out, I'm gonna be here for a couple years. I gotta unpack my bags and, and become a better basketball player. You no, know, he was part of the class with Harry Giles and Jason Tatum, who both were one and done. And that's gotta be a pill to swallow, I would think, when you're Marquise Bolden coming in thinking you're gonna be part of that. Well, this is something you can only see on ESPN+. Plus. Earn everything, which is the team motto, is our eight-part all-access series into Duke basketball. It's your chance to follow Coach K, Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, Cameron Reddish, and the rest of the team as they prepared for this season. Start your free trial of ESPN Plus now and watch all eight episodes today. And Chris, you know, they had a camera crew embedded with this team for four solid months. <laughs> It really is remarkable to be able to see behind the curtain at the program Coach K has built here at Duke. Well, I'm a big fan of, of hard knocks, and that's what this is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the college basketball version of that. And to see, you know, not many people get the opportunity to see that guy work in practice. And so that's what this does. It affords you the opportunity to see that up close. Pretty cool. Well, you know, during practice yesterday, I don't think I had ever, ever picked up on the fact that he says, yo, so yeah. much until I saw it in the series on ESPN Plus, and I counted at least 30 or 40 yokes. <laughs> it's all encompassing. He says it, and 10 people turn around thinking that they're talking, he's talking to them. J. 
Jack White, one of the co-captains, has come off the Duke bench. Number 41 for Duke. Shot clock down to six. Here's White, who his coach says is playing a spectacular brand of basketball, but we've got a foul on the drive. Army wants to make every driver become a passer. So they want that ball as Duke gets into the paint. They want who's, whoever's driving it to kick it out. And there, a nice slide over for to try to take a charge. It was Wes Jones right on top of it said the defender was in that restricted area. Yeah, Lonnie Grayson picks up the personal foul. Alex O'Connell has also come in. Williamson just bigger than everybody else. Bigger, stronger, faster. He's a perfect four for four from the floor. Eight points for the freshman out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Over Marquis Bolden, the shot is no good by Lonnie Grayson. Zion. Already ten points for the prize freshman. Marquis Bolden is going to pick up the blocking foul. Doug, he is every bit as advertised. He will take college basketball by storm. We're going to cart out of space. The quick second jump. If you don't know, now you know. And Zion Williamson slamming it home. Get used to that. Are you kidding me? This is everything. This might be one of the most fun college teams to watch. Say it right now. That team can beat Cleveland. Zion Williamson is special. How about that pass? I thought LeBron was one shot deal, but apparently the, the next guy is coming. Describe Zion Williamson in three words, and I was like, oh my God. It was something special to the home. It's been quite a last few days around the basketball world with everybody talking about Zion. Here's what his coach says about Williamson. He's this unique athlete, by far the best jumper. Lateral movement is quicker. He floats. Coach K says it's just tough to explain. How do you explain? Well, well when I look at him and then I look at myself in the mirror, I wonder how he and I are of the same species. <laughs> really? I mean... You know, I asked Will Stevens, Duke's strength and conditioning coach, who's been here over 20 years, and I said, what do you do with a guy like that? He said, well, we don't lift any weights. It's all body weight stuff. And to Zion's credit, he came in about 285. He's down into the mid-270s. He said, I actually am doing a lot of the same stuff I did with Jason Williams, Jay Williams when he was here, where we didn't have Jay Williams lift a lot of weights. Those guys are just, they are just physically gifted with their bodies and how strong they are. You start putting weights on those guys, and they'll really blow up. Nice problem to have. Yeah, one that you and I <laughs> have never had. As I said, if the aliens came down from outer space, and they're looking at he and I next to one another, they're saying, what is going on here? Yeah, what planet is he from? And so far this afternoon, Zion has been doing what Zion does. And you can put him anywhere. Like there he's on the block, he catches, carves out his space. Look at him. Outside his area. And then finishes at the rim. Great second jump, and the motor never stops. And that's what you have to love. As gifted as he is, he plays hard, man. Like he is a hard rocking dude who works himself into a lather. And something else that he does is that while well, obviously from that video montage you saw his left hand dominant, but he can finish just as well above the rim, below the rim with his right hand. We're living in a day and age in basketball where there are freak body types doing freak things. Giannis Antetokounmpo, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Zion Williamson. These body types who are doing things in the game that they were not doing 15, 20 years ago. And that's what's amazing. I mean, it's we've never seen you can compare Zion to whoever you want. It's you're forcing it He is as unique as it gets That's exactly what Kevin Durant said he watched the game on Tuesday. He saw the highlights KD says of Zion. He's a once-in-a-generation type athlete The folks at the next level are paying attention and again, it's not all about Zion He and RJ Barrett and Cam Reddish along with Trey Jones Came in as the highest rated recruiting class in the ESPN 100 this year, and they have played like it in this limited sample size. 
Army with the basketball, down only six, just past the midpoint here. Cameron Indoor on Veterans Day. And there's Tommy Funk, the junior co-captain out of Archbishop Wood High School in Pennsylvania. Funk and Jordan Fox are not afraid. I mean, they're attacking. Here's some of the other quotes that we got this week about Zion Williamson. There's KD talking about him. How about John Wall, one of the top two or three most athletic players I've ever seen in my life. And Steph Marbury going even farther saying he's going to destroy the entire planet. Steph Marbury <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Yeah, he, he certainly is. I mean, it is, uh, is must-see TV. Well, there was a lot of uh, conversation before the year. Last year, we were all caught up in Trey Young mania, and you had to watch Oklahoma Sooners games every single time. This is the man, and this is the team that I think is filling that role this year. That's what I said. I mean, Reddish, Barrett, and Zion go for 83 points the other night in their first college game. Trey Jones has seven assists and no turnovers. That's incredible. I mean, that's remarkable. Ball knocked out of bounds. They say Duke was the last to touch. The officials, though, are going to confer. Looks like it'll stay at this end as we take another look. Yeah, it looks like it hits Bolden's foot at, Bolden's foot at the end. Army's been knocking down its perimeter shots to stay close. Although that one way off the mark by Ben Kinker. Now as a team, Army 4 of 8. Duke is 5 of 10 collectively on three-pointers. Three of those made by Cam Reddish. Williamson spins into the lane, kicks to the side. Triple again. Nice. Finally finding the mark. R.J. Well, Barrett. And it's an unselfish play, Doug. I mean, you know, Zion could have easily risen up there in the lane once he got to his spot, kicks out the three, and Barrett buries it. Held ball. Nice defense in transition by Josh Caldwell. That's what impressed me the other night and, and so far here today is how unselfish these guys are. I mean, he gets to this spot. He can rise up and take a bad shot. But there's Barrett, disciplined with his spacing, knows he's going to get it. A nice pass and a nice finish. Well, when Zion Williamson gets the basketball that close, it's game over. 12 already for him. Whistle on the drive. Williamson now a perfect six for six. So get this, on his college career, he is now a combined 16 for 19 from the floor. Is that good? <laughs> for a video game. <laughs> And it makes you wonder where Zion got his athletic ability from. His father, Latif Williamson, played football briefly at North Carolina State. He was 6'5", 260, a defensive end. And there was no football team for Zion to play at Spartanburg Day School. It's all basketball for him. But can you imagine him being an edge rusher on the Duke football team? Nice job by Army there, turning that turnover into offense on the other end. Good spacing on the break, a nice kick out. That was Tucker Blackwell. And on the breakaway, it's Funk with the finger roll. They're plugging gaps nicely. I mean, that's about three or four pokeaways on the drive where they're, where they're helping and forcing those turnovers. 8-1 remaining first half will take a break at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Black Knights of the Hudson River are hanging around with Duke. Brick, thank you. Well, the uh, ACC, Chris, certainly should be interesting this year. Duke picked preseason number one with Tony Bennett, who's number two, Carolina three, Syracuse four. How do you see things shaking out at the top of the ACC this winter? Well, I think it's the best conference in college hoops as we sit here today, Doug. And, and it, you know, Florida State was incredibly impressive over Florida in their opener. They are deep and athletic. I think Virginia Tech is old, has a great chance to be good. And what a job Brad 
Brownell has done. You know, what he did last season, getting to that Sweet 16, and then they've got a chance to be really good again. So I, I think this league in that middle to top is going to be very good again. Yeah, you know, Clemson did a nice job last year once Dante Grantham went down of sustaining where they were. And my question about Virginia Tech, the loss of Chris Clark indefinitely, whether he comes back or not, I think will impact dramatically how good the Hokies are going to be come March. Army has scored off every single Duke turnover so far this afternoon. This is Josh Caldwell, the freshman out of Keith Woodhall High School in South Carolina. Lost the basketball, and here come the Blue Devils. Barrett lays it up. Williamson throws it down. Ooh. Reddish again. And even though he didn't make the bucket, Chris, there's another good decision by Trey Jones. He's already got four assists today. He's doing his thing. Yeah. And he could do more. And he's so intent on getting these other guys involved, making these other guys better. He gives up the ball quickly, doesn't hold on to it. He's so reminiscent of his brother. What a winner his brother was. Nice looking three point stroke by Alex King, sophomore from Columbus, Indiana. Army now with six made three-pointers, back within five. They really like King. They think he's going to be a good player. He was recruited by some bigger schools. Ended up here at Army. Has good size for that lead. Caldwell on the move. Challenges Reddish. Ball comes loose to Reddish. Duke back the other way. R.J. Barrett. A chance for three for the junior co-captain from Shipman, Virginia, Javin Delorier. Again, Zion always around the ball. That live ball turnover is a killer. I mean, you just cannot turn it over against Duke because they're too good in the open floor, too athletic, too fast, too good of finishers. Now how about the little drop up off there? I think even I could throw that lob, <laughs> knowing that... Just put it in the vicinity, but they are they're devastating in transition And that was one of the things for Jimmy Allen and, and army is you, you cannot turn it over because you're just not going to be able to get back well, Chris how about the fact that it took about 13 minutes of game time to get our first dunk of the afternoon Funk and Fox in the backcourt along with Jacob Kessler this is Kessler, feeds nice. the post to Wilson. Yeah, he'll head back to the free throw line. ESPN Basketball, a love story, our unprecedented 20-hour film that consists of more than 60 interconnected short stories, continues Tuesday with the final two episodes starting at 8 o'clock Eastern. All episodes are also streaming live on the ESPN app. And Chris, I assume, like myself, you have been able to see most or all of it. And I've just been blown away at how well they've told the stories, A, and how they weave them all together through the history of the sport. Yeah, I, it is, and I'm not just saying, it is a masterpiece. I mean, to, the, the interviews and, and the people they had to corral to sit down for the interviews and the stories that, that are told. It is highly entertaining, and you don't just have to be a basketball lover. Forty thirty-five. Duke with the basketball up by five. With former Army Black Knight basketball star, Chris Patola on Doug Sherman. Barrett pass knocked away. Duke keeps Reddish with a foot on the line. Here's Funk, who hit the game-winning three opening night to beat the Marist Red Foxes on Tuesday. These two guards, Jordan Fox and Funk, have done a nice job controlling this thing. They haven't panicked in, in the face of Duke's ball pressure. Look at this. Terrific ball movement to find Wilson on the low block. He was 8 of 8 the other night against Marist. Had 25 and has been a nice low post anchor for them here today. Big rebound for Jack White. Bring it back out to Reddish. Leans in. Tough shot. Gets it back. 
Wide open three for Jordan Goldwire. And once again, it's Caldwell who picks the pocket and tried to throw it down, but missed. Duke basketball. So I'm okay with that. Chance to, you know, in the open floor to throw one down in Cameron on the break. Now, to Jimmy Allen, a chance to cut it to one. I'm okay with the miss there. Be aggressive. And the one thing that Army has done here is they have stuck to their game plan. They are tough in their defense, and they're turning it into points on the other end. I can live with that miss dunk. So Caldwell comes out of the game. And you know, Josh Caldwell is a third generation military man following the footsteps of both his father and his grandfather. And again, on this Veterans Day, we celebrate those who have chosen to serve. O'Connell buries the three. Fox gives it back to Kessler, blocked by White. Should have stayed on the same, same side of the rim. He got Brankovich in the air. O'Connell tees it up again. This one way off the mark. Well, there's no question, Army, especially the co-captains, they're not afraid. Good-looking shot by Fox that rims out. It'll be Duke basketball when we come back. But the Black Knights have had no answer in the early going for Zion Williamson. He has been efficient. He has been sports center highlight worthy. And he leads the way for this high pluck. My guys, thank you very much. There's some of this guy. Hey, there's a midshipman in the house. I think, he's, I think he's exasperated that he went to the second or third best service academy. Wow in the country. He's wondering why he did not go to Army. Now he's here as he is for most every Duke game home and away because his son Justin is a reserve forward for the Blue Devils. And had a chance to talk as Williamson misses. Had a chance to talk with Justin yesterday after practice and ask him what it means in the Robinson household to celebrate Veterans Day. And he was quick to say that his uncle Chuck along with his dad and both of their grandparents served in the military. And so it means a lot. But he mixed no words, Chris, saying that in the Robinson household, it was always go Navy, beat Army. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised you, if, if the Admiral right there doesn't have a little Navy T-shirt yeah. underneath the Duke sweatshirt. Look, if, if, if David Robinson doesn't grow three inches in his time at Navy, which, you know, we, we maybe Navy doesn't make its run to the Sweet 16 that they did. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that because they came to the carrier dome <laughs> and knocked Syracuse out. So I'm not real happy about that memory that you're throwing out there, Captain Spatola. Pass kicked out Blackwell, and Army continues to stay with Duke under three minutes remaining in the first half. Garrett, Reddish, Williamson, Jones, the four freshmen out there with Jack White. Rebound pulled down by Ben Tinker, a 6'8 freshman from Greensburg, Indiana. Look at the spacing. Nice cut. And there he is throwing it down. Tinker makes the score 44-42. Army's execution has been impeccable in this half. And Duke has been somewhat complicit with their turnovers, and Army has really taken advantage. Well, you know, Duke put 59 on the board in the first half Tuesday against Kentucky. They probably won't get there this half today against Army. And you know what? In that first half, Kentucky scored 42, exactly what Army already has with two minutes to go. Jones absorbs the contact and will head to the line off the foul by Alex King. Not a bad shot by Funk. Kicks it back out, and then the spacing leads to the cut, and Barrett just falls asleep. And one of the things that Army wanted to do is they wanted to force these Duke players to be individual defenders. They wanted them to have to guard in space. As I said, Doug, Army's execution, both offensively and defensively, has been impeccable in this half. I'll tell you what. 
in the Patriot League where Lehigh is picked preseason number one followed by Bucknell and Colgate Army picked sixth. from what we've seen so far the cadets are going to be better than that this year well they're smart they're tough and they're unselfish and they've been all of that in this first half and let's understand Duke's state of mind as well. I mean, this is, there's a lot of noise about how good this team is over the last several days after what they did to Kentucky. They got to wake up. Jones off the quick head fake, lost it on the way up. On the switch, able to get into the lane. And a foul on the rebound. Tuesday, we will have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings at 7 p.m. Eastern. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions, as well as a live interview with new committee chairman Rob Mullins. You can always watch live on the ESPN app from anywhere. And your alma mater's football team that? now with eight wins for the third straight uh -huh. year, first time in 70 years. The Black Knights have done that. It should be nine. We had Oklahoma beat. We had a beat. Off the bounce. Reddish misfire. Here come the Black Knights again. Nobody boxes out Alex King who gets another opportunity can't cash in and finally the ball secured by Deloria and Duke's lucky there guys jogging back in transition Army had two put back opportunities Williamson able to get to the rim at will One and done this time for Army. Delorier with the defensive rebound. Shot clock off, under 20 seconds remaining in the half. Five seconds. White, back to Zion Williamson. But that's the only thing he missed in the first half. A perfect nine for nine up to that point. He leads all scores heading into the locker room with 21. But this is not a runaway. Duke. Black Knights of Army. With retired Captain Chris Spatola. I'm Doug Sherman. Thank you again for being with us here on Veterans Day where clearly the Army Black Knights came to play. No, they are game for this. And they're running. I mean, they're getting out and running. They have 12 points off of Duke's six turnovers, and they have seven threes. They haven't been afraid, and mind the pun, they came here to shoot their bullets. No doubt about it. And as compared to Tuesday in the opener against Kentucky, Army has done a better job in taking on this Duke Blue Devils team. Well, they play fast because they don't have great size, but their spacing has also allowed them to get to the basket and they've done a lot of this plugging gaps, poking those things away, and again, turning that into offense on the other end. Here's Army head coach Jimmy Allen moments ago in the locker room. We missed how many layups? Who missed the layup? All right, in a, in a dunk. Nice. All right. So, <laughs> let me cook. That's the difference in the game, okay? All right, we're doing a great job, especially transition, okay? Playing with pace and punching the paint. Continue to put pressure on them by trying to get in the paint and change it. And they did a terrific job at turning turnovers into points. Six first half Duke turnovers immediately turned into 12 Army points. The Black Knights with the basketball to begin the second half here at Cameron. And he's right about the missed layup. They had a missed dunk on the break, which again, if you're being aggressive, I'm fine with. But those kind of shots, what a block. They had a lot of shots, little layup, bunny layups around the basket. Jordan Fox buries the triple. It's back to a five-point game. Jones, Barrett, Reddish, Williamson, and Bolden, the five starters for Duke here in the second half. Bolden given plenty of room, and he missed it. That's the shot. 
Army defensively would love for Duke to take every time. Fox. Yes. The putback by Matt Wilson. And it's all early offense. Duke did not do a good job in that first half getting back in transition defense. And it was one of those things in their exhibition schedule they did not do well. Army playing downhill in the open floor and then recovering the miss right there was Matt Wilson. Williamson with his 21 points to lead all scorers finds Jones. Williamson no. Army fighting for it. Ball saved to Duke. And that's going to be an over the back foul. Well, here's a look at the first half numbers. Army shooting the basketball extremely well. Williamson and Reddish have been efficient, but the rest of the team, including R.J. Barrett, have not been as good. And so what has Army done specifically defending R.J. Barrett that Kentucky was unable to do Tuesday? Well, they're doing a great job of plugging gaps, and, and Duke knew that was what was going to happen, that, that Army was going to live with those perimeter shots. They were going to force Duke to beat them over the top. I think Army defensively in their man-to-man -man has been much more connected as far as plugging those gaps than Kentucky was. Boy, Reddish has one of the prettiest strokes you will ever see, but then he doesn't get back in transition. Gordon Fox has to pull it out, though. Tommy Funk dump it off. Good looking set for the Black Knights. Wilson continues to lead Army. It's back to a four point game. And they are, Army is gashing Duke's man to man. I mean, they are getting into the paint, even in the half court, getting into the paint when they want. Holden passes out of the double team. Another triple by the freshman out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. Josh Caldwell turned the corner. Off the pirouette, missed the shot over Bolden. <laughs> Foul before the shot, so no bucket for Trey Jones. And Chris, let's take a look at Army hustling for end. They'll run on makes or misses. And this one right there off of that Cam Reddish three. And then the spacing is leading to these drives. And here's on the other end, a nice split right there. And how about the change of direction? And then the finish by Trey Jones. Again, a very good offensive player, much more of a facilitator, but when he wants to, he can put that ball through the basket. RJ Barrett, his first bucket since the nine minute mark of the first half. Offensive Army runs it's just that high screener that big guy comes out sets that high screen and then four shooters faced around and another miss layup That was Alex King Barrett an air ball it pinballs around Williamson for at least the fourth time this afternoon on the floor to save the basketball for Duke it's Like a football player going oh, after yes. a fumble who's gonna get it away from him? Barrett bumped on his drive. And the personal will go against Tucker Blackwell, sophomore from Bloomington, Indiana, who actually is very familiar with the Duke University campus because Tucker Blackwell's father used to be a coach on the baseball team here at Duke and then wound up taking a job at IU with the Hoosiers. Baseball, basketball family, and uh, the families of the cadet athletes at Army have come in droves to Durham this weekend. And uh, it's a great opportunity to see their sons of course they don't get to see him too often during the year and then a chance to come to Cameron Indoor and the parents just like the players yesterday at practice walked into this building with wide eyes to see the likes of R.J. Barrett throwing it down well the Cameron crazies finally have something to cheer about but well, it's a good time now because you get a steady diet of Duke dunks, and this place is waiting for a reason to light on fire. R.J. Barrett there, a nice little drop off by Marquise Bolton, and Barrett, high percentage at the rim.
for a year in Baghdad. Yes. What are your most vivid memories of that time? The people I served with, the people in those photos with me, absolutely. Uh, I, I want to assure the taxpayers that was a war fighting machine that you were looking at in those photos. Just so there's no confusion over that. It's fighting them off with a basketball in your hands. <laughs> well, Duke has started to impose its will. A 7-0 run has ballooned the lead to 11. This matches the largest lead of the afternoon. Off the timeout, Duke continues its pressure. Mm. And that snaps the run. Nice looking mid range shot by Alex King. Williamson, good seal, but a better double team comes. Foul call against Kinker. That'll send Williamson to the line. Zion Williamson already with a double double here this afternoon 21 points 10 in Kalani Brown and, and an Arizona State team Doug that returns all of its starters a team that went to the second round in the NCAA tournament a year ago so uh, Rebecca Lobo assures me this is uh, this is gonna be a big time game tonight and I will say this you know about that last point you know those 40,000 Native Americans that served in Vietnam a lot of those veterans have not been properly recognized for their service and sacrifice to this country. So this game in fourth defiance is an, it's an unbelievable opportunity to share those stories, to celebrate them. Uh, what a great event it is. I'll, I will definitely be tuned in. Well said. Zion Williamson already with a double-double with the rebound. And I just wanted to add, as Williamson gets fouled again, the Duke basketball program has connections to Native American basketball. 1995 Duke grad Cherokee Parks was named in honor of his great grandmother who was a member of the Cherokee tribe. And then how about Kyrie Irving? His mom was a member of the Standing Rock Sioux tribe in North Dakota. So while you don't necessarily think of Native Americans playing basketball, men's and women's basketball alike for many, many years, they have loved the sport as we have. Army down 11 with the basketball. Tommy Funk driving on Barrett, uses the left hand off the window, but couldn't get the roll. Back to Funk, nice bounce pass. it inside. And once again, Army effectively passing inside. Well, he didn't pout on the missed layup that you know, almost goes down. He gets back into play, and what a pass to Wilson. I mean, this is, this is an unbelievable player by the junior. That ball almost goes down. He doesn't pout. He stays in the play. And look at the drop off between the two defenders. And a nice job by Wilson playing off. These two guards, Tommy Funk there and Jordan Fox. It is nice to be old at that position. Well, they both set up their teammates. Funk last year led the Patriot League in assists per game at 5.7. Fox not far behind at 4.2. It's a great combination to have two guys like that playing in tandem. Now you have the freshman Josh Caldwell, and that's a pretty good trio around the perimeter for Army. Here is the freshman who had the assist on the game-winning bucket in the opener against Marist on Tuesday, made by Funk. And again, good ball movement. Army hanging around, back within seven. Wilson was eight of eight the other night in that win over Marist. Had 25 points for them, six rebounds. Has really good size, particularly for that league, and what a play there by Barrett. Fox to the trailer, Wilson. And he and Bolden squared off in AAU ball. And Wilson told us yesterday that it was a competitive game and that he and Bolden facing off in Lexington, Kentucky, he felt like we're a pretty good match. Well, we asked this Army team, a lot of these guys, did you watch the game on Tuesday night? You know, what did you think? And, and he was one of the guys on Army who said, look, we're coming here to play. Block shot by Williamson. Well, Army knows they're good. Everybody knows Duke is good. We all, we all watch that game. But I, I think their execution's been great. And here's the attack, but how about that play? He covers up a lot of mistakes.
off the inbound. Another block shot by Williamson. Now, neither of those blocks, Chris, were as spectacular as the one against Kentucky, which I would maintain it was as much a steal as it was a block shot. And then the assist on the other end. Well, sure. I mean, anytime you can grab it out of midair, convert to transition, and then drop off a beautiful dime, you're going to make a lot of money at some point. No doubt. Well, we played earlier in our broadcast the buzz that's been going around this week in all corners of the ESPN networks at the NBA level, the college level, about the uh, display that Duke in general, and Zion Williamson in particular, has shown in the early going. You think it was too much? No. You're out of your mind. I'm I telling mean, you, how much, unless you're a member of, there's another one. He just gobbled up that shot. Barrett through traffic. Dump it off Jones, and he's going to retreat. Well, there's the left-hander, the crafty left-hander getting it done. How much fun as a basketball fan, unless you were a member of Big Blue Nation, was it to watch that game and how this team played together and with their unbelievable physical abilities? It's fun when any team lives up to its hype. And it's plays like that that R.J. Barrett was making and Zion Williamson and Reddish that I think electrified everybody. But the idea that this team is going to go undefeated is ludicrous. A, the ACC is incredibly good this year. It hasn't been done since 1976, so you've got the tide of history against this team. And it is a team of freshmen that was only up, all due respect to Army, but only up eight at half over Army. The point is, it's a long year. And the idea that they're going to undefeat it, or my goodness, Paul Pierce, the idea that this team could beat an <laughs> NBA team is ludicrous. All right, so let's look short-term rather than long-term as Funk buries the corner three. When the new rankings come out Monday, should do, will do, be number one. Yes, they will. On the backs of that performance. Again, I'm not, I'm not downplaying what they did, but nobody does hyperbole better than us right now and, and I just think we kind of got swept up in that moment and again it's so nice when a team that is hyped lives up to that pass to flex out of bounds by the way Zion Williamson on the last stoppage went out of the game for Duke he probably got worn out with three block shots on one possession <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's rare I mean we, we've talked about all the physical gifts and the skill set and all that but the motor combined with all of that is what makes that dude special his other now that's the one thing the other two freshmen don't quite have yet particularly in practice is as good as Barrett and Reddish are they don't quite have the motor the persistent motor that Zion Williamson has another three by Funk Army is 10 of 33 from beyond the arc Check that they've made 10 three-pointers, 10 of 22, much better percentage than I initially gave them credit. Down six, great crossover, got White on his heels, and once again, Army gets to the bucket and will head to the line. Career where they are. He or she is affirming their commitment to serve in the military. And so this is their affirmation that they will continue to build upon their academics and their physical training and their military training to become leaders of character for our nation. And the, the words of that oath are incredibly powerful, man, but, but certainly on a day like today. I mean, it, what does the military think of Veterans Day? I mean, we as civilians certainly celebrate, but what does the, the military think of a day like this? Well, I think for all of us, for all of us, it's... Clearly, it's a day that um, remembers 100 years ago at the uh, 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month when fighting ceased in World War I. But for, I think, the whole country, it's an opportunity collectively to uh, think about uh, who we are and take stock. It's an opportunity for all of us to give gratitude for those who 
I laid everything on the line. And I think for all of us, it's a source of inspiration, especially for those young cadets that you just saw down on the uh, court and at West Point as well. I'll tell you, Doug, when the dean comes up here, yes. I get a little bit nervous, okay? <laughs> I, I was checking my and shoes, my belt buckle, you know. I didn't bring your transcripts. No, yep, that's the other thing, that transcript. All right, we'll take a break, and we will keep the general here with us. Duke's lead is up to 14. Leaders of character, and primarily that's through the academic program. We have uh, rigorous classes with high standards, and most importantly, we have a uh, quality staff and faculty who are role models and experts in their field. And of course, it's the young men and women who have, uh, during this time, especially over the last uh, 17 years we've been at war, that have uh, agreed to sign up for that. Including the cadets who we are watching exactly. play Duke here this afternoon. Now, the big twist on you being here at Cameron is that A, you are a Duke alumna. That's correct. And B, <laughs> you work for the Army. So the big question is, who are you rooting for today? On any other day, it would be Duke. Okay. But not today. <laughs> All right. All right. Not Fair today. enough. Not today. But it's a great match, and this is what you see: uh, competition, tenacity, and grit, and that's all. That's what we're about, both at these great institutions. It's good to see that some plebes made the, the trip down in the most comfortable uniform. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Not <laughs> when I was a cadet. I mean, it hasn't changed in a hundred years, Doug. Like that thing is still. Look at the neck. Man, you we gotta do something it. about the neck. The wool, I mean, they're still making it in factories like with people who, they wanna see cadets go through the struggle. Well, you know, there's a lot of evolving and change at the academy, but there are some things that don't. <laughs> that never changed, I hear you. I'll tell you what, when uh, the cadets walked in here to Cameron for practice yesterday, that's the first and only thing Chris noticed. I think he started scratching his own neck, <laughs> remembering how uncomfortable it was. Well, I see your shoes are shine now, so yes. it must have had impact. I did, it did, <laughs> uh, mild impact. Well, Chris, did you uh, ever wind up in the Dean's office during your four years at West Point? Doug, there are some things uh, better left unsaid during this broadcast. <laughs> I, I, I ended up in summer school a couple summers that uh, the, the dean, I think, had a part of. I will say this, though. Yeah, well, th and that's some old old school hazing right yeah. there. Um, no, I mean, uh, jokes aside, the, the, the thing that the academy does so well is it, it's an unbelievable combination of athletics, academics but then the leadership part and i think that's where west point sets itself apart from from any other school in the world now well, the developing leaders of character is our focus everybody there it's a very dynamic environment everybody there is for a common purpose and that's defense of the republic and you can see what's being expressed right now in the court in front of us and we have great alums like yourself coach great. k great thank great you alums. <laughs> and there's uh, colonel yankovic our uh, officer uh, representative, another fine American. Zion Williamson with another block shot. This is, uh, you don't see that walking down the street very often. That is unbelievable timing. I mean, th and that's where his impact is not just on the offensive end. I think coming in, we heard so much about his dunking, and he wants to be a great basketball player, and he's committed to this defensive end. I mean, look at this, as much as he is to that other end. My word. Six block shots, five in the second half, and at any point, he can put his head up by the rim like we just saw. So, General, before we let you go, what is the rest of the day like for you and the rest of the folks who've made the trip here from West Point? Well, I know that uh, after this game, and there'll be celebration on both sides. Uh, great respect for the both uh, of these programs. I know the families are here, and I'm very excited to um, join their uh, their sons 
I believe they're getting together at the business school and having a nice celebration. My husband and I are gonna get to meet with our daughter-in-law who's currently assigned in Fort Bragg, as well as our son, so. Very nice. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your service to our country. Thank you so much. It's All right, we'll take, we'll take a break at Cameron with Duke up by 15. Thank you, guys. And we show you here a little bit of a, a day in the life, a normal day in the life at West Point for Jordan Fox, their senior co-captain. Second year captain, third year starter, fourth year contributor for the basketball team, but that's just a very small part of his day. And, and Chris Spatola, 2002 West Point graduate, I'm sure you miss those 6 a.m. wake up yeah, calls please, every day. Please take that down. You're giving me the shakes here. <laughs> <laughs> Remembering all of that. Well, what is it like for these players to juggle? I mean, for all student athletes at the Division I level, they have a lot of responsibilities, but for the cadet athletes, it's different. Yeah. Well, you, you heard Jimmy Allen, the head coach at Army, say it yesterday. Like, you, you acknowledge the fact that your players are always going to be tired. I mean, that, you know, it's nonstop at West Point, and, and you're, I mean, that place is preparing more than just basketball players. So, you know, like we said, the, the academics are, are rigorous, but you're trying to combine both the teaching of military tactics, the officership, officership part of it, and then all these guys are trying to compete at the Division One level in athletics. And for Jordan Fox in particular, he's a young man who grew up in Jackson County, Kentucky, and he said, I never imagined being at Cameron Indoor Stadium as a team captain. He didn't have many Division I opportunities, but he has come and carved out a terrific career at Army. He came into this game 80 points shy of 1,000 career points, and he will join you in the very near future as a member of the 1,000-point club at Army. And we mentioned it earlier. He said that when seeing Coach Krzyzewski for the first time in person here today, that'll make it real and it'll be like seeing a ghost. <laughs> but you know what, with all of those thoughts and emotions going on, I would say right from the start, Army has done very well compartmentalizing that stuff. Triple by Jack White. Quickly at the other end, Fox. Well, the, the Army doesn't play for any sort of feel-good losses, uh, but they have certainly acquitted themselves well today. I thought their game plan was excellent. Their execution of that game plan was terrific. Coach K is 6-0 against his alma mater, including two times beating you during your playing days here in this building. It's not easy, but like you said, this current edition of Army has played extremely well. Down 16. Could have cut it to 13. Williamson, another rebound. We played here in 2001, Doug, and I looked down in warm-ups, and it was Jay Williams, Shane Battier, Carlos Boozer, Mike Dunleavy, Chris Duhon. Is that all? I, I said, I, I can't even be standing on this floor, let alone play a game. And Coach K, in that game, on the first seven possessions, went down to Carlos Boozer. On five of them, he dunked it. It was unfair. It was unfair, Doug. Travel called by Barrett. Well, there's a big difference between the Patriot League and the top of the ACC, and uh, you were a two-time scoring champion in the Patriot, so that makes me think that on the scouting report when you came here, they knew who you were. Well, they knew I was going to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> there was never an assumption it would go in. Now, well, my friend here scored over 1,500 points during his four years at West Point. That is seventh best on the all-time list, which is headlined by the great Kevin Houston. Jordan Fox turned it over. Again, the four freshmen on the floor for Duke, along with co-captain Jack White, who has played so well here in the early going this season. Trey Jones buries the three. How'd you like to be the number 10 recruit overall in the entire country and yet still be the fourth best only recruit in your own class? Here at Duke University, they uh, do uh, they recruit at the very highest level once again this year. 
the number one overall class and trey jones big part of it following in the footsteps of his brother tyus who was the most outstanding player for duke last time they won the national championship they have a lot of similarities i think trey jones is actually a little bit bigger more athletic now it's to be determined if he has that clutch gene that his brother did i mean tyus jones made so many big time shots closing out games that year they're both winners though that is for sure i mean they are easy to play with and both winners now, i've got to figure that because of the jimmy butler trade that's the only reason why tyus is not here today couldn't get that private plane to come see his little brother like he did on Tuesday. Tyus, of course, playing with the Timberwolves again this year. Blackwell, no. Another rebound for Williamson. Well, the uh, freshman class has been getting done again here in the second half, especially. Zion, Reddish, Barrett, and Jones have 34 of Duke's 37 points since the break. White off the feed from Jones. Wow. Williamson on the reverse. Give him 25. Long three-pointer from the head of the key. Doesn't go for Tommy Funk. The lob to Barrett, but he had already vacated. And so it's a Duke turnover. But the freshmen flexing their muscles here in the second half, led by the six-foot, seven-inch, 285-pound freshman, Zion Williamson. As advertised right from the jump, Zion Williamson has been spectacular. And it's the extra effort stuff. I mean, that's what, you know, forget the, the skill set and the dunking, all that. I mean, look at all the extra effort outside of his area plays that he is making. NBA folks must be salivating over just how hard this kid plays. And it's infectious. Look at this, protecting their basket. Foul call on Cam Reddish. And there are the numbers on the Duke freshmen today who have been so good, especially here in the second half. And how about for Cam Reddish, his seven made three-pointers today is a new freshman record here at Duke. The uh, previous record was six. R.J. Barrett, after being relatively quiet in the first half, having a big second half as well. well they're just really hard to guard. I mean, that's going to be the challenge all year because if you're in the man, they're going to, that five-out motion, they're going to move until they get the matchup they want. They're playing all the, all those guys, Williamson, Barrett, Reddish, they're all 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, so they're going to get the switch and get the matchup they want. If It's hard to zone them. I mean, Kentucky the other night played eight possessions of zone, and Duke scored 16 points out of it. So it's, you know, they're just, they're so versatile. And Coach K, as he told us yesterday, the, the mantra of their coaching staff is less is more. They're going to allow these guys to play. They only called about three plays the other night against Kentucky. Everything else was improvisational. Alex King off the penetration. A good look by Blackwell. Can't get the roll. Trey Jones. There's the versatility you're talking about. The point guard able to receive from the four, if you will, on a drive and dish. A 
And that's the other problem. You say, well, we'll play off with Jones because he doesn't want to shoot it. He knocks down the first three of the game the other night against Kentucky. Well, Chris, this is something you can only see on ESPN+. Plus. Earn everything, which is the team motto, is our eight-part all-access series into Duke basketball. It's your chance to follow Coach K and this fabulous freshman class as they've prepared for this season. It's available now. You can start your free trial on ESPN+. Plus and watch all eight episodes today. Looks like the end of the day for number one in white, Zion Williamson and the other fabulous freshmen head out. Well, since the inception of the AP Top 25 or Top 20 poll back then in 1949, the Duke Blue Devils, along with the UCLA Bruins, have been number one the most often. When the new one comes out this next week, will Duke stand alone as number one and the most all-time weeks at number one? Yeah, I, I would think so. Um, I, look, I think for one through five, they are the best team in America. Now, Kansas, one through nine, ten, is, is probably the best team, which is to say that I think Kansas is deeper. Uh, their two freshmen were spectacular against Michigan State in the Champions Classic. The, the two most impressive offensive teams I see have been Duke and Gonzaga. Now, Duke did their stuff against Kentucky, and Gonzaga hasn't played quite that level of competition. Yeah, Rui Hachimura is going to be a uh, first-team All-American. He scored 33 for the Zags in their opener. His numbers were down a little bit in their second game yesterday only because they didn't need to play he heavier minutes. But he is legit. They've got a senior point guard who can win a lot of games for you. And if Killian Tilly comes back sooner than later, look out. I was going to say, they're playing without Tilly. They, I mean, look, that's what they do. Mark Few has always coached that well, that end of the floor as well as anybody. Good looking stroke by John Amezi, senior from Waxhaw, North Carolina, gets an opportunity to say, I made a bucket at Cameron Indoor. And you know what, on this Veterans Day, I'd like to give a personal thank you and regards to retired Lieutenant Commander Mark Rugenstein of the Navy. He's my father-in-law. Thank him for his service and also to his family because for every service man or woman, there is a family standing behind who sacrifices many things as well. So thank you very much. Thank you to you, Chris. Thank you to Coach K and all the other servicemen and women, both here at Cameron and in our audience. Well, tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern on ESPN with John Anderson and Keith Olbermann, a little retro big show tonight. They'll have post-game reactions from Cowboys Eagles, plus highlights from our Veterans Day special here at Cameron and updates from Hawks Lakers. Sports Center, 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, a salute indeed to the Army Black Knights who acquitted themselves extremely well here this afternoon, but ultimately the talent of the Duke Blue Devils wore them down. 94-72 our final score. What a day. Again, I echo what you said. All those veterans who have served and are serving, their families, we thank you.